Okay, with this example, we are asked to look at the graph that's provided and figure out which one of these functions is the right one. So I think we can narrow down the choices pretty quickly. It's a J curve, so the base must be greater than one. It's been dropped down, so it's most likely A or C because of the negative constant being subtracted from the exponential portion. So I'm going to try it with A because to me when I look at the points there I see the point 2 comma 0 and um, 0 comma negative 12, negative 1 comma negative 14. It seems most likely that the base must be 2 rather than 3 but I'm going to try it out by plotting some points and I'm going to use Excel to help us do that. And let's see, here's Excel. So you can see I've typed it in and I've actually already plotted the points but I'm going to show you how I did it so that you can try to recreate this. It's uh, extremely helpful if you know how to do this. You can do it just by, you know, pencil and paper, plugging in x values and seeing what the function output is. So you can get x comma y values. Um, but I'm going to set this up so you can see first what I did. I did equals, then the base 2, the caret for exponent. Then I want x plus 2 as my exponent, so I'm going to put that in a quantity. But instead of putting x, I'm going to refer to the x value right here, then put plus 2, then minus 16. Okay, so this, let's just check to see if this makes sense. If I plug in a negative 2 right here, then it'll be negative 2 plus 2 is 0, 2 to the po positive 0, or excuse me, 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 1 minus 16 is negative 15. So that is correct. Now I want to also set this up so that I can drag this down and what you'll notice is that the reference A7 right here has changed if I go down to the next one A8 so it's referring to the next cell down. So what I did to drag that formula I've shown this in class many times, but just as a reminder, if I hover over the bottom right corner until my cursor looks like a black plus sign and then hold my mouse down and drag, it drags the relative reference. Keeps the constants the same, but it drags the relative reference. Now if I wanted to try it with a different function, I could do it with um, the base 3, which was the other one I thought was probably the answer. to the power of x plus 2 minus 16 and I can quickly change all my y values by going back in changing the base to 3 and then dragging that formula again so it'll change all the values. Um, I also could have maybe set up two tables uh, let's see And let's say this one is with a base of 2 on it. It was my original one. And then let's say I wanted to compare that with the function that has base 3. So I could have also set it up to do 3 to, oops, 3 to the power of x plus 2 and then minus 16. And then I'm able to compare these two sets here, sets of points, to see which one has the same points that are on the picture I was provided. And this would be 3 to the Right. 
Um, but what might be more efficient is if I had a place for my base. And then when I set this up, instead of putting in the number two, I could click on the cell that contains my base. I can put two there and then it'll do what I had it do before. Now if I want to be able to drag this though, I've got to make sure that this cell reference to the X value or to the uh, base value is going to stay the same for all of them. So I want it to keep referring back to that cell for my base. So if I go in front of it with my cursor, you can see I'm in front of the cell reference, and then press F4, it'll put dollar signs in certain places, and I'll show you if I can get it to work for me. And it's not for some reason working, so I'm going to type them in by hand. If you press F4, it's supposed to do this automatically, but you can also do it by hand. I want to keep this, the row, uh, column reference the same and the row reference the same. It's called an absolute reference, so that it will always refer to that base. So even though it's dragging the relative reference for the input, it is keeping the base the same on all of those. And then if I wanted to change it quickly, I can just change the base like this, and it'll recalculate all my values for me. Um, so now I'm going to show you the picture we had originally, and let's see which one makes sense, which one matches. All right, so the point 2 comma 0 should be on there. Let's see. Here's 2 comma 0. Let's just highlight that. That's on the graph. Um, 0, negative 12. 1 comma 8 is supposed to be, let's see, but let's first do all the ones that we see here. So there's also negative 1 and negative 14. That's right here. So far, so good. Now, if I want to see if it works also with base 3, notice that the values don't match. So now I know for sure A is the correct answer. We can do the same thing for this one. I'm looking at the graph and it looks like it's been reflected upside down. It looks like it was an originally a regular J curve that got flipped upside down. So that means there must have been a negative out front. So it's definitely not going to be C because that's the basic function. Obviously, this one is not a regular J. Um, it could be A, B, or D. Another thing is that the asymptote has been moved from the x-axis up. So it's got to be one that has plus 8 on it or plus a constant on it rather than negative a constant on it because if it was negative, it would have been dropped down. So it's going to be one of these two, A or B. Now let's look what's happening to the exponent. So um, on A, it says x plus 1, which means the J curve would have been moved one unit to the left. And B says it would have been moved one unit to the right. So to me, it looks like it's been moved one unit to the left because this looks like the point that's normally right over here. So I'm thinking it's been moved to the left. So I'm going to guess it's A, but let's plot some points and see. So now we have a base of negative two. Um, actually, it's not a base of negative. It's still a base of positive two. Um, but we have to change the formula. So if I have a negative out front, and also what else do I need to change? The exponent plus one. and the constant plus 8. So I'm just trying to make it match that equation. And then drag that down. Let's clear out all the colors I had before. All right, so now uh, if I've programmed this right, when I plug in, let's try this one, the easiest one. When you plug in a 0 for x, negative 2 to the power of 0, 
plus 1. So 0 plus 1 is 1, negative 2 to the power of 1. So 2 to the power of 1 would be 2. Then times a negative, negative 2. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. So it looks OK so far, just for that point at least. Um, let's see if all these points are on this. So we have 0, 6. Let's see, 0, 6 is there. Uh, 2 comma 0 is there. What else? Negative 1 comma 7? No, it's not. Okay, let's see if we try B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in and I'm going to change it to a negative 1. That's not working. Okay, so what I did to figure out what was calculating incorrectly, or if it was calculating incorrectly, is I just did this one by hand. So I did um, negative 2 to the power of 0 plus 1. So the first thing you would do is 0 plus 1 is I'm doing this point right here, uh, this point. This is the one that was giving the wrong answer. So I did first, um, if you do negative 1 right here, it'll be negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And 2 to the power of 0 is 1, right? Now if you put a negative in front of that, and then you add 8, so that's negative 1, right? And then you add 8 onto it, you get 7. So doing it by hand, I actually did it on paper, but see, I can't really show it to you. Um, I can't, I can't draw on this screen, unfortunately. Um, so I'm showing you how, you know, just figuring it out myself. I know the answer should be seven and not nine as it was before. And the problem was, um, I originally had it just the negative in front of the whole thing, but um, it was reading. Uh, let me undo this. I'll show you the programming again from the beginning. So I put equals, a negative, and then my base to the power of, and I want to keep that base the same every time, so i got to put some dollar signs in here. My base to the power of the input value plus 1 and then plus 8 on the outside. So that's what I did before. Now, in on paper that makes sense, but Excel is reading this part of it as negative 2. It's taking negative 2 and then raising negative 2 to a power, and I don't want that. I want just positive 2 to be raised to a power, and then after that, make it negative. So I want to put parentheses in here around the base reference. Um, let me put, actually, I'll put it around the whole exponential reference. So I want the negative to happen after the exponent has been applied. And then drag that down. Okay, so when I had it without the parentheses, here's what I had. For some of the input values, it doesn't make a difference, and for some it does. Like this one looks fine. And then when I drag this down, I got 9 before, remember? So I got to put, like I said, put the parentheses around the exponential portion of the equation or of the um, computation. And then drag that down, and now it's correct. It's giving me correct values. So back to where I was, I was checking to see if each of these points was on the graph, uh, that, that is on the graph, is happening when I input the x values into this function. So I'm checking function A. And that's what I've programmed here is function A. 
So I'm going to check again. So starting over with um, 0 comma 6, that one's on there. 2 comma 0 is on there. Negative 1 comma 7 is on there. Now I can also check 1 comma 4. So 1 comma 4 would be right about here. Oh, there it is. It looks like it's on there. So that one's good. And negative 2 comma seven and a half so two four seven and a half yeah looks about right okay so i'm guessing that's the right answer let's check it yep all right so before i told you um with the first example we did which was this function um i first showed you how to do it with just you know just program, programming it in with the numbers. Then I showed you how to have an absolute reference for the base so that you could easily change the base quickly. Um, but now I'm going to show you also how you can do all the transformations automatically. So you can do the um, you can do the reflection, vertical reflection. So if I want to put it upside down, I can do negative 1 as the vertical reflection. If I don't want to put it upside down, I can do positive 1. Okay. If I want to do a vertical stretch, I can do that. Um, but I'm not going to do it for this one. So let's just do what we're doing here. Um, then I can do a vertical or a horizontal shift. So if I want to move, like for this one, uh, let's look at, this one has a, well, let me use a different one. Let me go back to this one. So I'm going to use the function, I'm trying to do negative 2 to the x plus 1 plus 18. Okay, that's what I'm trying to do. So I have a vertical reflection because of that negative out in front. I have the base 2 right here. Then my horizontal shift is going to be negative 1, the opposite sign for horizontal shifting. And then my vertical shift is going to be positive 18. I don't have to put the positive there, 18. Now, when I go to program my y values, I'm going to do the vertical reflection times the exponential part, which is the base 2 to the power of parentheses x plus the horizontal shift value. So that would be the input is x plus the horizontal shifter, close parentheses. And then I want to add 18 onto the end of that. So I do need to close my parentheses that I started here to enclose my exponential expression. So after I've closed the parentheses for the exponent, I want to close the parentheses on the entire exponential expression. Then I'm going to add 18. And then um, the other thing that you want to do before you drag this is make any reference to one of these values has to be absolute. So my first one here has to have dollar signs in front of the column reference and the row reference. The B4 is my base. I want to also make that absolute. The A7, that's my X. I want that to be relative because I want it to drag down as I drag the formula. So I'm not going to put dollar signs on that one. This one gets dollar signs because it's the horizontal shifter that I want to use the same every time. 
and then I put plus 18 what I meant to do was plus the vertical shifter cell and again we want that to be absolute as well Okay, and clearly these are not coming out the way they were before and the reason is that even though we do know we are moving horizontally in the negative direction right because we move the opposite direction of the plus one the way I'm pr programming this is straight up the formula equation so it's gonna automatically result in a move to the left I don't have to say it's a negative one so I'm actually gonna put a, a regular positive one here right so you don't have to put the opposite sign when you're doing it in this way the other thing is um, that the original equation is plus 8 here so for some reason I had plus 18 so let's fix that that's supposed to be just an 8 so I'll change my vertical shifter to positive 8 and now you can see that it's coming up with the same ordered pairs as when I did it before so now if I wanted to just change any one little part of the equation like let's say I wanted to check it for part for equation B here a function B you've got negative 2 X to the negative 1 plus 8 so when I change my horizontal shifter to negative 1 then I'm getting all those wrong points there or if I wanted to test it against function C so then I would change a lot I would make my vertical reflection 1 because there is no negative on the front the base stays 2, there is no horizontal shift, there is no vertical shift, you know, when it's just, if it were just 2 to the x. Okay, so this up here, this part, is just for me to be able to look at it, to know what the function is. It actually doesn't have any application down here as far as computation is concerned. All the computing happens based on these and it's happening um, in the cells with those um, absolute and relative references. Let's do one more. All right, so now this one is 3 to the negative x plus 11. If I want to try to make my calculator compute ordered pairs for this function, I'm going to come over here and change my reflection it's positive one or I can I can type this in just so we know what we're talking about here we're talking about 3 to the power of negative x plus 11 so positive 1 as the vertical reflection the base is 3 my now I have a horizontal reflection as well so I'm actually going to move this and have a horizontal reflect and this time it is a negative one so how do I fix that in here where my x reference is the cell to the left of the y value I'm trying to calculate a7 in this case now I'm going to put in front of that I'm going to click here on the horizontal reflection and then put times. So whenever this is negative 1, it'll flip horizontally. And again, I want that to be absolute, so it's always referring to that same value. And then, all right, so I'm going to pause to double check all these computations okay so there was one other thing needed here and that was the plus 11 I hadn't put in my horse my vertical shift so now I've added the vertical shift 11 units and you can see that it automatic so I'll show you how it was before I didn't have a vertical shift there and then when I change that to 11 if you were to plug negative 2 into this function you'll get 20 if you're to plug negative 1 into this function you'll get positive 14 and so on and I've checked all those so now it's functioning correctly and um, now this is set up 
to do exactly what um, the graphing function in my math lab does is it has a kind of a user interface I'll go back up to the questions I'm referring to so I did a video earlier showing you how to use the graphing utility so like for this one when you go to graph it and you choose the J curve you can set it puts the base in for you automatically, but you can set the transformations and it'll just move it around for you. So this is the user interface that is programmed in my math lab and we've just created one for ourselves in Excel so that it'll work for any exponential function. So let's go to another example. I'll do, I said one more, but I'm gonna do one more, one more. All right, there are no one mores, but I'll just I'll just finish this one because I don't think I've checked it yet. So I want to see if these values. OK, so the points that I want to check here, let's check it against my T table. I have I'm looking for the point negative 114. Got that right here. the point 0, 012, the point 1 and 34 over 3. So when I put in 1 here, I got 11.33, which if you do 34 divided by 3, it'll go in a little bit more than 11 times because 11 times 3 is 33. So this seems like a reasonable answer. If you want to check it, you can do on the side equals 34 divided by 3 and make sure they're equivalent. All right, so we've got that on there. All right, so I'm feeling confident at this point that that answer that I was choosing is correct, this uh, function A. Okay, so that's it for this type of question. Um, again, the Excel portion of it Excel is really great for helping you out if you're going to be doing multiple problems and you set something up like this for yourself. It'll make it easy for you to check ordered pairs quickly. But is it really required to do all that fancy programming? No. Uh, you could just, you know, do paper and, paper and pencil and, and, you know, carry out your calculations in a cell like this. Like if I had written down, let's see what happens when I plug in zero then I can do the calculations in a cell just like treating the cell like a regular calculator. 3 uh, to the power of, if I plug in uh, 0, it'll be 3 to the power of 0. So 3 to the power of 0. Okay, so that's 1. And then I want to add 11 to that. Right, so it's not necessary to know how to get fancy here. Um, I could also, it all depends on the person how you want to do these things, but I could have also done to the power of negative 0 plus 11. So that I'm just typing the whole thing. I'm typing the whole uh, algebraic expression as I see it. So that it'll do one computation all in one shot. And I'm just putting 0 in place of x. So then I can go, oh, okay, I have 12. That's, and then you could do that by hand. It's going to take you a lot longer. And, you know, this is just really great. Um, once you've figured it out that it's working properly, you gotta, you got to check yourself. you got to make sure you try all these. Um, like what you can do is once you think you have it set up right is you can go through and, you know, do each one with regular numbers. So 3 to the power of negative two, negative negative 2 plus 11 okay that worked out let's do uh, 3 to the power of negative negative 1 plus 11 
and so on, so you can check them all. I think I'll leave it here. I'll see you on the next video.